and and the sheep, the ones who get in line and just do what they're told and they do the nine to five bullshit. Well, those are the ones that get the house and the picket fence, and they've got they've got the three kids that all grow up to be fucking sheep, just like them. Brainwashed with sports-driven mentality, high school debate team bullshit, um, scientifically illiterate, don't know how to think. They just they just fill in the blanks with opinions that serve to placate their fears and bullshit. So I'm super, super disgusted with the world, and if I had it my way, I would make it so that no no average intelligence person was allowed to breed at all for like the next hundred years or something. Like I don't I don't want to lose the phenotypes. They do have value, but ninety percent of the population being average intelligence I mean, I'm sorry, but average is just a, a brilliant intellectual who studies intelligence way of creating taxonomy that outlines what they're observing and at the same time calls almost everyone borderline retarded without them realizing that they're being insulted because they're that clever. I pointed out. And like, hey, if someone's good at basketball, yeah, if someone's good at basketball, Awesome. I'm going to celebrate with them. I'm going to get high in their farts. Tell me more, Harlem Globetrotter. Make a half-court shot. Show me your YouTube shit. Epic. Killer. But when dumb people fill in the blanks with their opinions and pretend like their thinking has value, well, they're on my court then. And instead of them giving me the respect for being what, what I'm good at, they devalue it and piss all over my efforts to be a, a, a fucking epic thinker. And that takes away your niche in the environment, which is life or death. If there's no value for a thinker, then how are you to survive in this economic shit show? Really, you can't. Like, you can't make hardly any money being a writer anymore, unless you're going to write fucking tripe that the people want to hear. Like, talk about AI taking over and killing everybody, or talk about Jesus and God and whatever, supernatural or whatever, or... Or talking about Trump. If you make YouTube videos talking about Trump, you're going to get a lot of attention. And uh, I refuse to do it. The only video I've made about politics is basically telling everybody they're their own fucking shills. While they're busy fucking talking about who they're going to vote for, who the people should vote for, and then arguing their dumb fucking opinions. Meanwhile, they don't unify and escape slavery. And they're just caught up in the shit show. And then they troll me. And then I slay them. I rip out their psychological state and I show it for everyone who might be reading the forums. And I, I show I show them why they're trolling, how they've misunderstood the situations. I show them their logical fallacy. And then they get even more angry with me because they know I'm right. And they don't even want to face that part of themselves. Here's the thing. If you're basing your um, what you think your IQ is on the old school testing, that it's culturally biased testing. It'll have questions like, there's a bunch of jumbled up letters here, English word, English letters, and um, it's either a capital of a state, a name of a car, or a name of a game. Which one is it? And um, right there, if you knew a bunch of capitals in states, and if you knew a bunch of types of cars, and if you knew about a bunch of different board games or whatever, then you would figure it out pretty easily. But if you culturally did something completely different your entire childhood and you don't give a shit about what people arbitrarily pretend the names of places are when really you know they don't know what anything is and you just don't give a fuck, you're not interested, right? Then you'll get that question wrong. And if you think visually and you don't ever use math and you don't remember all the equations you didn't just get out of school, then you're not going to do that well in the math sections of an IQ test. But it doesn't mean that you're stupid. It's actually failing to test you for what you're smart. Like Einstein's quote, you can't judge the intelligence of a fish for its ability to climb a tree. Right? So we specialize. Like nowadays, neurology knows this. And um, they've actually replaced the culturally biased IQ tests. And the ones that test for your innate abstract problem solving and pattern recognition, common sense and shit, because that's really what the basis of what your abilities are going to be, is how well you can discern from the abstract what someone has intended you to discern if you look close enough. Like riddles and shit. Lateral thinking. So when I took one of those IQ tests, I scored 125 on the old ones, which is superior intellect. And um, 
it's like I didn't get genius because I don't use math and I don't care about memory. I'm just not sheepish enough, basically. I don't, I'm not a Jeopardy contestant. And so what I realized was that they were measuring your usefulness to the industrial world. Because the better your memory is, and if you're smart, then the easier you are to be programmed or formed into a specialized tool. Like a neurologist, a lawyer, a lab technician. That's what they want the smart people to be. The so-called smart people. But meanwhile, they don't test for emotional recognition, um, abstract problem solving, um, the lateral comparative analysis, uh, thinking on your feet, coordination. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Even the, the IQ test that I'm about to tell you about, or I'm telling you about, the non-culturally biased one, even that one, it still doesn't test for every aspect of intelligence. You'd have to have a battery of tests. And um, someone could be, say, like super genius level in abstract problem solving. Their critical thinking, cause and effect virtuoso or whatever. But horrible at Jeopardy and math. And I'll score low on an IQ test because of that. But the new ones, the only section of the test was the very last section, the very last part of the very last section. That was the only time I even felt mildly challenged by it. The whole rest of the test, I just knew the answer so fast. I whizzed through that thing so fucking fast. And then the very last section, it got so fucking complicated that, like, I feel like you'd have to be some sort of, you know, autistic savant to be able to have the natural pattern recognition to spot that. Now, I could go and study pattern recognition, improve my abilities, like, learn what they're looking for. And then I could go back and test, take the test and do better and probably get that last section. Really, I probably could have done that last section if I'd really wanted to sit there and take the time to sit there and like write it out and really study the patterns. But it was going to take so much time that I was just like, look, I'm done jumping through your fucking hoops. Now give me the result of my test. You know, I was like, fine, I'll take a fucking score of 180 instead of 200. Whatever. Show it to me. And then they're like, give us money. And I'm like, you motherfuckers. I'm like, no, I've got a good idea of where I land. According to this test, I'm a genius, at least in the skills and the abilities that this test is testing for. Emotionally, like, I don't have a single piece of art in my house. I'm not very art artistic or expressive in that regard. I'm, I'm very mechanical, logical, like, guitar for me is like a video game and I like the patterns and the more complex the patterns and certain patterns and meticulous no mistakes hot streaks and shit like nothing emotional about it i fucking hate emotion fucking trash i use what i need of it but i frown upon it rather be a vulcan turn into fucking robocop keep nothing but my brain and my penis be robocock be the fucking porn surname would be the fucking jackhammer, the pile driver. I like porn too, by the way. Ooh, I'm not. Porno everything. I thought that I was pretty desensitized and, and a dirty bastard, and then I met a 19 year old girl that likes gore porn and uh, hente uh, futinari porn, which I didn't even know what futa, futa nari, fun tenari, that's what I call it. Fun Tanari porn. I don't know how fun it is, but it's funny. So that's what I call it. And um, I didn't even know what it was until like a week and a half ago. And I thought that I knew porn. But I haven't had broadband internet at my disposal every single day until like the past uh, maybe five years. And before that, I had nothing but dial up. So like I got porn pictures and videos were out of the question. I watched a lot of documentaries while I lived in the woods with no broadband. I grew my mind, but I, I, my brain is atrophied in the porn department. I thought that I was nasty when I got to like desensitized from the shit I liked, and then like I was watching bukkake porn, and I was like, oh, I'm I'm naughty. And then I realized that I'm tame as fuck, and like I got bored of bukkake, and I'm right back to passionate lesbian porn. Like, college girls that are passionate lesbians and they're grinding their vaginas together. Oh, it's still my favorite. There's nothing beats it. Even you get bored of it, you still come back and it's great. So I'm full, I went full circle with the shit. 
And now, I just want hookers. I want to build an army of sixes. You can take over the world with an army of sixes. Seriously. Are you pondering what I'm pondering, Pinky? No, I think so, Brian. Do we have enough Viagra?